Welcome to About That Business, powered by Vistaprint, a show where we talk to athletes that are building brands. This episode features Spencer Dinwiddie of the Brooklynettes. Spencer gave us a scoop on his app, Galaxy, short for Creator Galaxy. He's hoping it will be the future of community engagement for the creator economy. He also talked to us about how he went from sketching sneakers as a kid to owning his own shoe company. Let's jump in. So Spencer, thank you so much for joining us for the inaugural episode of About That Business, powered by Vistaprint. I'm excited to have you as our first guest. First, I'd like to say thank you to Vistaprint. Thank you to you for you know being our moderator, for having me. You know, we're living in a different world right now, different social justice era, but I'd love to just kind of hear how you're dealing with all this stuff. What are you doing to stay centered? How are you getting involved? I'm into like the social injustice stuff. It's, it's big, right? And, and beyond just like who we are as people, and obviously I'm an African-American male, but being in the spotlight for my number one profession, which is basketball, and kind of being looked at as supposedly a thought leader, right? Even though most of the guys in the NBA are between 20 and 30, right? You probably shouldn't be a thought leader when you're you know, still in your 20. I think that's something that a lot of people forget. It's that NBA players are super young and being scrutinized about every word and the movement and things can be emotionally challenging and taxing. I'm 27 with a, with a two-year-old son. In normal circumstances, you're gonna say, oh, that's a young man that's trying to figure out his life. But because I'm in the NBA, it, it's, it's just a tough position to be in because you, you say one thing and, and you're met with so much animosity and you're trying to speak your heart, but you're trying to be you know, very articulate and clean and clear so people don't you know, misconstrue the message or, or take a sound bite and try to, you know, flip it on you and all that stuff. But I mean, at the end of the day, I would say it's, it's about just understanding that we're all humans, right? And and that when there is a downtrodden section of society, like, why wouldn't we try to uplift them? I wonder where you get your, your dedication, your passion for wanting to help those that are in challenging situations. You worked your way to where you are today, but you've You've met a certain standard, you have a comfortable living, but you haven't just settled with that. But where did those values get ingrained with you? I mean, the foundation of, of my whole being is definitely my parents. My family's had a, a small scale a scholarship fund in the church that I grew up in. So when it came time for you know me to kind of think and process how I want to get back and, and start my own charity and, and doing things like that, it became an extension of what my family's moral foundation is already so that's kind of where like the ethos came from. That sounds wonderful. You've got a great family foundation there. I'm also curious to know about the tech side of your brain and whether your family influenced that. I've read that you've described yourself as I'm just a tech guy with the jumper. I mean, I can loosely say that it came from my dad. Um, he has a very kind of like analytical engineering type of mind, but it's just the way he processed the world. I think he passed that on to, to my brother and I, you know, wanted to break things down to the smallest form and really understand why they do what they do and then, you know, have a hopefully a real world application and be able to help people from there. From there, right, you, you're mixing passion with the way your mind works and, and that's kind of how I got into blockchain. I'd love for you to explain Galaxy. How are you changing the games on social? What we see in social media is uh, the ability to give out opinions and have some level of interaction, but not necessarily always truly authentic interaction. But what happened when it's like truly like the influencer or the person that you're trying to interact with at that hub. So where are you in this process? When should our viewers expect this to drop? We're targeting an end of October launch um, in terms of beta and all that. So people start able to interact. I mean, you can go to galaxy.com and, and sign up and get all the updates and all that stuff. We want to build something that people love. And I think there's a, a passionate group behind us that really believes in that mission. And you've got another business that you're in. I really love the disrupt reality every available moment, I feel that. When did you have the dream for Project Dream? And maybe tell us a little bit about what it took to make that dream a reality. Well, sometimes things aren't about the money. Building shoes was very much just like, hey, like it's something that I wanted to do. I used to draw shoes as a kid. You know, I just came to this like place of, hey, what if I brought a shoe to real life? So it was almost like speaking into reality and fulfilling a, a, a dream a little boy had. So I really built it just to be the best basketball shoe in the market. To, like, the, the technology that we use and, and all the other stuff like uh, the attention to detail was, was much, much more about fulfilling a dream than it was um, necessarily being the, the most consumer friendly. Talk to me about how, what steps you took to take it from your mind, from dreamland to reality, to a shoe that you could touch. I understand it's got great quality and technology involved, but what was it like? What were you doing? It's a minefield, like it's, 
it's very, very, very hard to do. Um, you know, it took me, what, a year and a half, two years, or something like that, to, to build it and do it the right way. Like, you fail first. Like, you get samples that will never see the light of day. And every day, you mean with developers, you mean with this, you mean with that. So, you know, it, it, it takes people. Like, there, there's nothing that you can kind of do uh, completely on your own. Where athletes go wrong with starting a small business is they want to go from being an all-star on the court to just being an all-star in the business world. But they need to take all the skills they took that, be, that brought them to all-star status basketball-wise and understand they're starting at rookie level business-wise. The, the journey becomes a reward, you know, when you're, when you're giving your all and you're not holding back or looking for a fail-safe or looking for a plan B. It's just, you know, the whole experience becomes like what it was meant to be. Spencer, what is some advice that you'd give to an entrepreneur, a small business owner that's really just kind of starting out? What are some things, some gems that you'd like to drop for them? Build up a thick skin and be ready to be resilient. It, it ain't easy. You know what I mean? And, and that's whether you're in the NBA or whether, whether you're not. High profile people get a lot of yeses in terms of starting the business. And so it might seem like you're going to gravy train on biscuit wheels for a second, but you know, you're going to be hit with uh, the nose. You're going to be hit with the, uh, you know, tough questions or, you know, legacy systems that want to, you know, stop what you're doing and all that stuff because you're breaking barriers and doing something that's maybe a little bit uncomfortable for them. So if you believe in your dream and what you can accomplish, uh, uh, sky's the limit, man. The odds are that you're going to succeed in some form or fashion. Like, I don't know if you're going to make a billion dollars, but, you know, you'll, you'll make something and, and, you'll, and you'll have fun in the process. Huge thanks to Spencer Dinwiddie for joining us and to all of you for watching About That Business. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. And for more information about this show and our upcoming guests, please like us, love us, or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Until next time.